Allah Azza wa Jal first announces to all of the angels, and we understand that it includes at that time Iblis among them, Inni Khaliqun Basharan Minteen. I am about to create a human being from dirt or from clay. When he's saying this, he has not made Adam yet. And when I'm done balancing him, and when I blow into him from my ruh, then he says, Then fall into sajda before. Allah has described that He is about to create our father, and He has also described the process He's going to use to create us. He says, first of all, I'm going to make him from teen. We're not the only creation on this earth made from teen. In fact, all of the animals and all of the species that exist on this planet also are made from teen. But there's something additional about this creation that He's about to make, our father, and by extension us, that is more than just theme. There's something more than just this animal presence, this animal existence. فَإِذَا سَوَيْتُهُ When I make him balanced. So Allah says there's a level of balance and perfection that is going to be added to this creature that doesn't exist in other creatures. Allah is telling us that human beings will have an ability to balance opposing things. They're going to have the ability, for example, to balance their individual needs with the needs of their family. They're going to balance their personal responsibilities with social responsibilities. They're going to balance their rights and their responsibilities. The balance is actually between our impulses, our emotions, and our thought process. So let me explain what that means. When a hungry dog sees something, it goes and it bites it. It doesn't think about the consequences. There's the emotion and then there's the action, that's it. But human beings, they can look at something and say, no, that's illegal, no, that's haram. You're getting late for work, there's a red light. Right? You have the ability to balance your emotion, your need, your desire to get to work early, but your need to abide by the law and stop at the red light. We're able to balance our thoughts and our emotions. Unlike other species, when they have an emotion, they have an impulse, they jump on it, they react. But we can think about the consequences, we can think about the long term, we can hold ourselves back. Allah Azza wa here says, human beings will be made with this amazing ability of balance. Then He says, and then on top of that, I will blow into him from my own ruh, meaning the ruh that Allah especially designed for this human being, the special thing that will connect him, this human being, and Allah together in a unique way. That's what's going to be inside him. So this ruh is inside him, unlike other animals and other species, there's a special kind of thing, a special kind of light inside this human being. So he's made up of these three things. He's made up of dirt, and he's made up of this balance, and he's made up of this ruh. And he let the angels know, these are the three parts that will make this human being amazing. And when these three things come together, then fa ta'ulahu sajideen, then fall into sajda. It's important to note, the angels don't just see the seen. The angels are creatures of the unseen. So what is invisible to us like the arsh of Allah, what is invisible to us like the jinn, what is invisible to us like the secrets of the skies. Many of them, the angels, they travel through the skies. And then on top of that, they get to communicate directly with Allah. Allah talks directly to the angels. And Allah is telling them that this creature is so incredible. Of all the vast universe that He created, He says this one thing is so powerful that every last one of you should be overwhelmed at what Allah has done when He created Adam. That you should fall into sajda. فَسَجَدَ الْمَلَائِكَةَ كُلُّهُمْ أَجْمَعُونَ All of them, all together, fall into sajda. How big of a deal is the creation of Adam alayhi salam? So now, this announcement is made. And Iblis we know heard this announcement also. And if Iblis heard this announcement, he also knows that Adam is made up of three things. But we know that when, Allah tells us that when he refused to do sajda, he turns to Allah, he doesn't say, خَلَقْتَنِي مِن نَارٍ وَخَلَقْتَهُ مِن طِينٍ وَسَوَّيْتَهُ وَنَفَخْتَ فِيهِ مِن رُوحِكَ He doesn't say that. He says, you made me from fire, you made him from dirt. That's just one of those three things, isn't it? There's two more things. And he knows about those two other things. He knows about the taswiyah, the balance of the human being. He also knows about the ruh that is inside the human being. But when he complains to Allah that you made him from dirt, he pretends that he doesn't know about those other two things. But he does. He fully knows. When he denies these other two things, he knows that if he acknowledges those two things, then he has to acknowledge how incredible the human being actually is. But if he only acknowledges the dirt, if he only acknowledges the mud, then what's the difference between Adam and a horse? 
What's the difference between Adam and a cow and a monkey? They eat, he eats. They get shelter, they get shelter. They have kids, he has kids. He's not, he's just an evolved animal. That's all. Okay, so he can stand on his two feet. Big deal. He deliberately denies two components of our existence out of the three. Now, he hates humanity. He blames Allah for giving us this position. He swore that he wants to not only see Adam السلام, fail, because you know, if you hate Adam, then you got Adam expelled from Jannah, you should be like, I'm good now. I got my revenge. Feel better. Nah, he doesn't feel better. He's like, now I'm gonna get his kids. And now I'm gonna get his family. Now I'm gonna get their kids and their kids. And he keeps ruining human beings time and time and time and time again. One of the things that we learn from this passage and these ayat of the Quran, is that Iblis did not want the human being to be acknowledged as something worthy. One of his greatest successes, if he can convince you and me that in fact you're not worthy. Self-worth, valuing yourself, respecting yourself as a human being, is actually one of the great crises in the world today. Oh, I used to have a job, but I'm retired now. Nobody cares about my opinion. I, you know, I'm worthless. I just sit home all day. My son has a job. My daughters are gone away to college and I'm just useless here. I'm just a burden on everyone. There's an old man sitting in his home thinking he's completely worthless. All I can do is just go to the masjid and come back, but I live with this worthlessness inside me. It's just better if I just die. A young man lives with worthlessness. He says, my brother graduated. My cousin got a job. Everybody else is doing better. This one already got married. Look at me, I, I've got nothing. Thing. Everybody tells me I'm a loser, I must be a loser. What does Iblis want to do? He wants to get people to say things around you in your life. They'll say things to you that make you feel worthless. They don't even realize they're doing it. But they're having this effect on you when you start thinking, yeah, maybe I am worthless. Maybe I'm not that big of a deal. I'm a nobody. Once you develop low self-esteem, you don't value yourself, then you're always thinking the only way I will be valued is if somebody else values me. If somebody else approves, then I have value. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna take a picture of myself, I'm gonna make sure I change all the filters enough times, and then I'm gonna post it online, and I'm gonna wait for somebody to do this, or somebody to put, a, put one of these, or at least a mashallah or something. Give me something, because if somebody gives me, I have some value. All right, now what do I gotta do? I, I need more value, because I'm worthless again. I haven't posted in two days. I need to get back on. I need to feel valued again. When you don't have enough value for yourself, you're always looking for value from where? Somewhere else, someone else. Always looking for somebody else's approval. Always looking for somebody else's compliment. You didn't say anything. But what do you think? What do you think I should do? What do you think of this? What do you think of that? Constantly asking for somebody else's opinion. Because without it, you're worthless. When you have low self-esteem, then you can't deal with any of your rights. Like people can walk all over you, they can humiliate you, and in your head you're like, yeah, I deserve it, I'm scum anyway. What's even better is Iblis comes to those in your life sometimes, and he says, hey, say this to him. Say, you know what? I know I treat you like a dog, but you deserve worse than that. So you should be happy that I even treat you this much. And you hear that enough times and what happens? You start internalizing it. Because human beings, even if you reject something at first, if you hear it enough times, you start getting influenced by that. You start seeing yourself that way. When you start developing this, this is a great victory of shaitan because shaitan says, that's what I was saying, man. That's exactly what I was saying, just dirt. Look at him. What balance, what rule. And what does Allah do? Before you and I even came on this earth, because of what our father was given, which we have been given, the creation of our bodies, then on top of that the taswiyah, and on top of that the ruh. He gave us an honor above all of Allah's creation, and all of us, Allah's creation see us as a miracle of Allah, worthy of all the angels falling into sajda, in awe of what Allah has done. So now the angels in the heavens are impressed with you, and you're not impressed with yourself. You think you're worthless. But this is one side of the equation that we value ourselves. But Iblis, you know, he's got multiple tactics. One subject that keeps coming up is self-love, self-worth, self-esteem, which is what I'm talking about too. But you can take that too far. You're amazing. You're the best. Believe in yourself. You, you, you. Nafsuk, nafsuk, nafsuk. And you're like, yes, nafsi, nafsi, nafsi. You know, you become like obsessed with, yeah, I'm awesome. I'm amazing. And then some parents do this to their kids. You're the princess. The little four-year-old girl, you're my princess. Everybody else is ugly. You're the prettiest. You're the best. And this little girl turns into a monster. She goes at school and she goes, the princess is here. Kiss the ring. Like she, she develops this like inflated sense of self. This is actually the reality of arrogance. 
So on the one hand, we value ourselves. But what we actually are supposed to value is the potential that Allah gave us. We're supposed to value the ability to make the effort that Allah gave us. Not the things that Allah gave us. The things that Allah gave us, He can give to anybody else. And these things will come and they will go. But the only thing of value before Allah is, and before ourselves should actually be just our efforts. وَأَلَّيْسَ لِلْإِنسَانِ إِلَّا مَا سَعَى Human beings will have nothing of worth on Judgment Day except the efforts that they made. That's it. This balance between confidence and humility that has to be struck. Because too much self-worth will turn into arrogance. And too much humility, then you start thinking, I'm nothing, I'm nobody. And that's what Allah Azza wa Jal defined as one of the most amazing qualities that human beings have. There's this spiritual and there's this material. There's this confidence and there's this humility. And they both coexist. There's taswiyah all the time. And it's remarkable, right? That on the one hand, Allah mentioned dirt. And on the other hand, Allah mentioned the ruh, the two opposites. And in between them, He mentioned balance. Subhanallah. Our entire life is supposed to be a struggle to find that balance to find that real worth in ourselves. So we're not looking for it in other people. We're not looking for it in things. We're not looking for it in posts or engagement or followers. We're not looking for worth in the clothes we're wearing. We're looking for worth in what we give to Allah Azza wa Jalla. No goodness is worthless. No good effort is worthless. No human being is worthless. Find value in yourself that Allah has already given you. May Allah Azza wa Jal allow us to value ourselves, see our worth, and not allow shaitan to make me and you see ourselves as someone worthless or unworthy or someone who should be stepped on or should be punished. We should stop doing that self-hatred. And may Allah allow that self-value never to turn into arrogance.